I mean, one thing that's that's cool about 100 mile races is that you go, I mean, you know, people say it's kind of like life. It's amazing to me how you can be to a point, and this goes to, I think, I don't know if you or Chip said it early on, but this idea of like, you've done 50 miles or something. And then the idea of doing another 50 is just like insane. Yeah. Like, and I remember the first 50 mile I, mile I ever did. And it, when I finished, I was totally dead. I was like on the border of, do another of mile. passing out. Yeah. And like, I couldn't even fathom the idea of running another 50 miles. Like it just <laughs> seemed impossible. Yeah. But there's something about just like sticking through those hard times, those low moments. And it's amazing to see how your energy can come back. Mm. Like, almost sometimes stronger than before. Like it's, it's weird. And obviously like the, if you have stomach issues and you can't get food down and you just have like, you're totally empty, right. there's not a lot you can do, Possible, Yeah. but as long as you can keep food down and just keep moving at it. And, and I tell myself through these races, like, just keep moving at it, just keep moving at whatever is efficient at that time for you. It might be a, a walk. It might be a jog. It might be, um, hopefully not a crawl, but and, and that's another great thing about hundreds. It's like you you can uh, you don't have to be too stressed about walking. And it's a long I mean, it's a long time, right? right. It's a long time to do anything. And as, as long as you can stick with it and keep yourself moving, like those low times can become high times. Um, and it's amazing to me how that how that happens. And I think it's true with life, too. If you can stick yeah. through those hard times, there's always going to be enough time ahead. All right, what's up, everybody? Welcome to episode 103 of Me Dweller Podcast. I am Stuart Anderson, and in this episode, me and Chip interview John Love. Grateful for John, thankful for his friendship and his example, and especially uh, the suffering that he went through at last year's Wasatch 100. It is incredible to hear the story. Uh, it is so fun to know that John went through that. Uh, it is unbelievable to me to, to hear anyone's story of suffering through the Wasatch 100 and particularly John who took third place last year in 2023 uh, on the podium with an hour, a 21 hour race, which is just unbelievable. So it's, it's fun to hear John's story, how he got started, uh, what he learned from ultra running and uh, just his attitude in general about sports, his family and participation in, uh, in, in events like this. So Grateful for John and thankful for the time he spent and, and his friendship. He is awesome. Uh, coming up, camp. So we are a month away from being in St. George together. Super grateful for Jake Cook and all he's done to plan and prepare. Uh, we also have a camp committee, which has been really fun to see other team members step up and use their skills to make camp planning uh, a lot more fun and a lot more involved for more guys. So super grateful for them and thankful for the committee planning camp. Grateful for everybody who was with us last week picking up kits, the fun 40th anniversary kits that we all now have. And the kit store is open for another three or four weeks. Uh, so get your orders in for the 40th anniversary kit. We'll probably do one more order before the end of the year, but a uh, great time to pick up the 40th anniversary kit. So Thanks, everybody. Specifically grateful for uh, John and Chip for joining on this episode. I really learned a lot from John. Uh, what a great man and great example. So thanks to him, and uh, hopefully you enjoy as much as I did. All right. All right. What's up? Welcome to uh, episode 103 with John Love, Spencer Chippy. Hey, guys. Hey. Hey. Guys, this has like been a long, it's been a month since the last uh, podcast. Quite a drought. Were you missing it? Oh, no, just busy. Everyone's so busy. <laughs> yeah. Start of the year. Um, today is March 12th. So uh, grateful to connect with John and Chip. We are a month out. Well, I guess a month out, right, Chip? Yeah. From team camp. Mm -hmm. John, are you going to team camp? I would like to. I don't know if I can pull it off this year. But <laughs> it sounds like every year, I think it's, it sounds like a great time. It is. <laughs> Is so the, the problem is I wouldn't be able to keep up with anybody. <laughs> nah, that doesn't it matter. Rides at such a high level all like year round now. There's no down season. It's crazy. It's true. Chip, any announcements about camp? Anything you want to say? Oh man, there's a lot. There's uh, I would just I would just echo what John was saying. It seems like each year it outperforms the last, and um, 
uh, just it's uh, so fun to get together and kick off the season. Yeah. Um, so that's what I look forward to most. Me too. Last week was fun. We had kit pickup. Fun to see everybody out in their uh, 40th anniversary kits. John, did you get a 40th anniversary kit? I did. Is I, that what I handed I you? I missed that, yeah. Have you been wearing it around your house or what's been going on? Uh, not yet, but I'm going, I'll am i sleep in it tonight. <laughs> okay. <laughs> if that means anything. <laughs> uh, really fun. I would do a shout out to Mike Hansine. Uh, really fun to honor him. Chip had a great script honoring Mike. I mean, he's literally been part of the team since uh, day one. So really fun to give him a 40th anniversary kit. And kind of, although he was very... He's very shy about it. He did not yeah. want that. <laughs> he was trying to like hide away from us. So yeah. it was cool to, it was cool to see him. So very good. Yeah. And thanks to everybody who came out. We only had three people miss picking up their bags. That's like an all time record uh, guys that were just out of town. So appreciate wow. that. Out of, yeah. out of how many, like a hundred and something. <laughs> we had, we had over 106 individual orders. So wow. a lot of, and I know some people had their stuff picked up for them, but either way, that's still just as helpful as yeah. uh showing cleans up, cleans up your porch. Oh man. <laughs> Everybody always jokes around. What are you going to do with, I said, we're just going to leave them. I don't know. Leave them on chips driveway. You can come grab them if you want. I don't. <laughs> <That's> right. <laughs> so, uh, John, thank you for being on. We, I mentioned this podcast a while ago. Um, and then I, I kind of forgot. And then I was like, I can't remember some, I think you joined a Zwift ride recently. Like you're a uh, with, <laughs> is that what happened? <laughs> and I did a trivia question about you on the Zwift ride. <laughs> yeah, I think, I think that's right. Yeah. I saw yeah. one that I thought I might be able to keep up on this one. So I joined. <laughs> so, um, if you didn't, if you didn't know, the bulk of our conversation today, we'll we'll talk about John's ultra running, uh, very illustrious career. Took third place in last year's Wasatch 100, which I hope we can spend the bulk of our time talking about. Right, guys? John, yeah, sure. you okay with that? Yeah. Although, can you like, are the memories vivid? Can you remember it all, or is it just like a big blur? I think, um, I think I, I think I remember a good chunk. Good. Or I've, I've, I mean, I've done races where it's like a couldn't tell you how I got from one place to another. <laughs> this one wasn't one of those. I I, I feel like I, I feel like I remember it. I love. <laughs> so it. I guess we'll see. <laughs> uh, John and I met years ago at this funny little gym we used to go to, Vitality Functional Fitness. Uh, we were both, I don't know what, struggling endurance athletes trying to be fit during the winter. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and that's that's where we met. And then you're. I mean, we're in the same neighborhood, although now you've moved to, you're in the Suncrest area now, right? Yeah. Yeah. We moved down there like two years ago. Really opened up your ultra career trails, right? Yeah. Easy to find a trail down there, at least Ooh. in the non-winter months. <laughs> <laughs> um, John's lovely wife wrote a short introduction that I will, I'll read and Chip, stop anytime mm -hmm. we want to dig in. John, stop anytime here. So, um, all right. It says, John when John decides to do something, he doesn't quit before it's done. John's journey into distance running commenced in, two <laughs> commenced in 2005. He has since completed numerous races, both road and trail, with some detours for cycling along the way. Uh, bless you. Bless you, John. Mm -hmm. His love for trail running grew as he got older, easier on his body, and met others that enjoyed exploring the nearby mountain trails. He likes to see as far, he likes to see how far he can push his body. And when people ask him how he does it, how he runs so far, this is typical. Uh, this is very good. When people ask him how he runs, he just says, you just put one foot in front of the other. Yeah. <laughs> just, just that easy. This could be the model for John's life, reflecting his unwavering dedication and refusal to succumb to adversity. He's worked hard consistently from a very young age and doesn't give up easily. He's dedicated to what he does and loyal to his family, friends, and beliefs. In preparation for running the 2023 Wasatch 100, John completed a solid block of training that included numerous long runs and races. He sacrificed a lot of time and a lot of energy to training and strengthening his body to peak performance level. For race day, John set ambitious goals for each aid station, meticulously orchestrating every detail from drop bags to cruise supplies in an effort to minimize the inevitable uncertainty. 
John had the goal of finishing the Wasatch 100 in under 24 hours and crushed that goal with the help of running angels, including his crew, finishing in 21 hours and 30-ish minutes. He took third place overall. His family and friends were so very proud and are continuously in awe of his efforts and ability. His determination and strength are attributes that his three daughters learn from daily. His wonderful wife, Allison, can be seen at every aid station during whichever race, but may be quiet because she's trying to hold back happy, proud tears every time <laughs> she sees her runner. I love that. Yeah, that's so <laughs> awesome. Nice. I think John, we, can, we can just wrap up. Wrap now. up. Very yeah, good. Go downhill. <laughs> <laughs> I'll leave on a high note. I just have, I have one question. John, do you believe her first paragraph? Is this your motto for life? Uh, I don't know if I have a motto for life. <laughs> just kind of <laughs> just take it as it comes. I don't know. I mean, you're so, uh, I don't know. I We only know, me and Chip know. Uh, one ultra runner very well, mm -hmm. but he's the same kind of quiet and just like, well, I just put one foot in front of the other. And mm -hmm. I'm like, no, you don't. This is like an unbelievable amount of suffering that you can endure. Yeah. Uh, pa pause there for a minute, Stu, to just reiterate for those listening, the Wasatch 100. Oh, nice. 99 yeah. miles. So it's a hundred miles, obviously. Um, but 23,550 vertical feet. I mean, to a cyclist, that makes complete sense because any one of us that have had a day on the bike of 10K, 10, you're like- You're incapacitated. Hey, yeah, That was done. like a five hour, you know, that was a massive day. 23,550. Um, I, I would say- on that particular day, I was on my road bike up Mill Creek Canyon in the aid station just because of watching it. And if I was to set the tone for what like it feels like or looks like in that uh, stage of the race in the Mill Creek Canyon feed station, there's not a lot of like bells and cheering like you hear in a race that is we're typically used to when you roll in halfway through or even towards the end of Lodajai, everyone's yelling this is like quiet respect almost and but the runners are like i mean they are john this is where we turn it over to you they are <laughs> not like they're not like thrilled at the they are that's a tough spot in that moment right there yeah. Yeah. I mean, that up, upper big water, right? That's mm -hmm. what you're talking about. Yep. Yeah. That can be a tough spot for a lot of reasons. I mean, you've just come up through like, you can, I mean, up to lambs is just brutal, right? It's so hot, so exposed. A lot of races are lost in that section from like big mountain to lambs. Mm. Um, you're walking through that dry, hot, grassy area walking, running, you know, whatever you can do to keep moving. And then you've got the big climb up, um, up and over into Mill Creek. And then you've got the climb up Mill Creek. And <clears throat> for some people, it's starting to get dark by that point. And um, I mean, you still got a long way to go. <laughs> yeah. Man, I saw that guy that you caught, um, the goatee guy. Yeah, um, Jeff Browning. Okay, so me and Kristen were mountain biking that day. And I was like, I was like, so dumb. I was like, I saw him and I was like, Hey man, are you winning? Like thinking that there had been hundreds of runners that had come <laughs> up the, and he like was, he was like in second place. Yeah. Like he doesn't yeah. say anything to us. He's just like, no. you, you idiot. Like, yeah. Anyway. John, will you give us just a, a background, maybe your family, where you grew up, um, and then kind of roll that into how you got involved in 2005 into running. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So, I mean, not really much exciting as far as background goes. I grew up in West Jordan. Um, I'm the oldest of six kids. Um, just kind of a really kind of average, well, average family of six kids. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, I didn't really... I played soccer a little bit my younger years at like competition soccer. Once I got into middle school, I got into like skateboarding, snowboarding. And then that was really like all I cared about through high school. Um, 
wasn't really, I never thought of myself as being like, in fact, I wasn't like, I wasn't very coordinated, <laughs> which it was maybe why I didn't really, uh, like I didn't really get into, you know, many team sports or any team sports except for soccer, which I enjoyed playing. Um, but I always, I always felt like I was just kind of, I don't know, I was kind of small, kind of chubby, um, <laughs> uh, no no real like cool background as far as sporting goes um and then like 2000 so I after so after high school uh, I did I was like directionless like I just kind of did whatever worked worked a lot of manual labor jobs mm. um didn't really have like a direction school wise or anything um I think I worked in the mall at Kinney's Shoes at one point and then worked construction for a, a year or two. Went on a mission when I was, I think I was, I was like 20 something to Sacramento, California, very exotic. Mm -hmm. um, and then came home and got into school, um, went to the U and then eventually law school later on, but uh, got into running. I don't even remember how I got into it. Uh, 2005, um, I ran, uh five marathons that year i just kind of jumped into it they did they have this, in fact i think uh i was listening to i think it was sean montmany talked about doing the grand slam and i did that in 2005 so it was like um the major utah marathons at the time so salt lake marathon ogden marathon um logan or top of utah i guess it's called park city and saint george is that five yeah, I'm missing one. Anyway, I think that's five. So I did those. Um, and I it was just like a like a I was a, like a weekend warrior guy, like no real plan, just you know struggling through it. Uh, do trying you know doing a big run on the weekend on Saturday, but then otherwise, just kind of I don't know, just kind of doing it. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, like I, I you know I don't know. It was uh, I mean it was just something to do. Um, and then I did a few other road marathons in 2006, 2007, did a few short trail races like the Jupiter peak steeplechase, Was Wasatch steeplechase, which are kind of big, bigger kind of long time events. I don't know if they're doing Wasatch steeplechase anymore, actually, but it's a fun one, you know, up to black mountain down city Creek Canyon. Mm. Um, and then, uh, I got married in 2006 and just kind of worked and actually about that time. Uh, so 2007, I was working for a consulting firm and uh, one of my friends there, a colleague, uh, Ted Tatos was a big biker. And I think he was riding with Mid the Midwelle crew at that time um, back. Uh, so it was, I guess it was maybe after the Rhodes Doe days. Isn't that, wasn't the Rhodes Doe like a, a sponsor? Mm -hmm. day? Yeah. Anyway, so um and our firm ended up being a sponsor in, I think it was 2007 or 2008. And around that time, I got a road bike. So to try and bring this back to cycling a little bit, I got kind of got into cycling then, dabbled in that. Um, you got it. you got an old blue kit. Yeah, I still have it in a, in a bin somewhere. I, <laughs> if I come to, if I, if I do come to camp, I'll wear that. Nice kit. <laughs> <Yes. laughs> on, on the days that, that um, we don't need to, I don't know. Anyway, um so I feel like I've I've gotten off on a tangent, but um, yeah, and then just kind of like did life. I don't know. I mean, worked for a couple of years, went to law school in two thousand nine. Didn't really do a lot of exercise, like like racing or anything like that. Like nothing serious. Two thousand nine until I graduated. I mean, we lived down in Springville at the time. I went to BYU for law school, and uh, kind of got out on the trails occasionally, but nothing too serious. Um, Graduated 2012 from law school, moved back up to Salt Lake, and that's about the time, I think 2000, so I think I started going to Vitality in 2013, January mm -hmm. 2013 or something. I was probably out of shape, overweight, and like, <laughs> it kicks my butt every day. <laughs> like, you just constantly sore hamstrings every mm -hmm. single day um, for weeks at a time. <laughs> Uh, but it was great. And then 2000, so 2013, I did that. And then that's when I signed up for my first ultra, which was at the time, 
uh, it was called the Squaw Peak 50. Now it's mm -hmm. the Snow Snowy Peaks 50 or Snow Peaks 50, but it's kind of a a, a big a big 50 miler here. One of the the ones on the Wasatch Front. Um, and my training for that, like if you were to look back at it, it was, it was again kind of like weekend warrior mentality. I would do like five miles during the week and then go out for like a 25 mile run on Saturday and then take an ice bath. And, mm -hmm. and I don't know how I, how I even finished that race on the training I was doing, <laughs> but nothing, you know, it was just, just trying to get it done. Um, and that's kind of where I started with the, with the ultra stuff. Um, and then since then I've done a bunch of 50 Ks done. I did squat peak again in 2020. Um, done some trail marathons, things like that. I mean, I've always kind of run on and off since then, except for 2017, I had a, uh, I had surgery uh, to fix a hip issue, mm. which you might remember, Stuart, I remember, yeah. seeing me with a, a diaper looking with thing your, on. With your ice, ice diaper. <laughs> ice, ice, ice diaper. Um, and then that year, so that I did, I had the surgery in January, 2017, and um started cycling more uh with you guys in like the spring of that year and then got more into it and it was great yep. um you know, getting out with the crew immigration uh mill creek all the good stuff um i mean some of the i still have great memories of going up like lambs canyon or doing that that's big, right up uh, parley's into park city and down cottonwood yeah. or, or getting killed on you know trying to keep up going up uh <laughs> Do that loop. what was that loop yeah i mean yeah. <laughs> those loops up into park city and then like over into heber and stuff mm -hmm. so 2017 2018 did a, a quite you know a, i mean for for you guys it's like probably no cycling really but <laughs> like did mostly cycling um still trying to recover from the hip stuff and i've always kind of had like a kind of nagging hip hip back issues on the one side mm -hmm. um but yeah, then 2019, 20, 21, 22, 23 to the present, just kind of got back into running more. And I, I love them both. I love cycling. I love running. Running is for me, it's just more uh, convenient is probably the yeah. the short answer. <laughs> I can, I mean, it's, it's easier to get in, you know, a 45 minute run than to go out for an hour and a half bike ride for me. But yeah. Um, hoping to do more cycling this year. I was hoping to do more last year and then I got into Wasatch and then that kind of took over everything. So you got a neon kit now. You got yeah, it. I'm excited to wear it. It's, it's <laughs> cool. I love, chip, I love. chip, any follow-up questions on John's? Uh, I've got one. If you, yeah, have. I, I, um, it was interesting, John, cause I remember perfectly when you started to ride with us more and you were um, coming from, the injury kind of rehabbing a little bit, but, but there were already no questions that your, your motor was already mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> very strong. So I think we're all getting the sense that, um, John kind of downplays his <laughs> endurance a little bit. And so John on the bike as a newcomer was already in the top of our class. Yeah. Um, so uh, it, it was, <laughs> it was cool. It was cool to see that just transform right into it. It was, it was, it was a great time. Like, honestly, some of my, my fondest memories of like, I, I, I mean, sporting generally or fitness, awesome. you know, generally is just some of those, those rides are just great. I mean, yeah. Cycling is so great because it's not, I mean, it's just so it's like pure fitness, right? Like you can just do it. You don't have to worry about like, oh, you know, I'm, I'm like, I mean, you can get injured doing it, obviously, but it's just, I mean, it's just great. <laughs> um, John, if you don't, so I don't know uh, ultras very well, but like to take third place, right? That's like, in my eyes, that's like elite. You don't just, you don't just show up and be like, oh, had a great day. Um, so do you think that you are that like, did I, you like, like you do all these races and events and you're like, Hey, I'm pretty good at this. Like, is that how it goes? No, I don't think so. Honestly, I think if, 
if I can do it, I think anybody can do it. Oh man. Like I, in my mind, I think people probably see like, oh, he did that. Like I'm going to sign up and I can beat that easily. <laughs> okay. Like I'm not, I'm just a, like, I don't, I don't know. I don't, I don't see my life. I mean, there are so many people that are so much faster than me. Hmm. Um, I just, okay. I don't know. I had a great day that day. It, yeah. Okay. Follow-up question then, then what, what does it take? Like in your eyes, when you look at the dudes that are like really good at ultras, what does it take to be? I don't know. Like the guys that are elite, like fast, fast guys. Like there's a guy in my neighborhood, Caleb Olson. He's, you know, like on the Nike trail team. Hmm. And those guys that like, I can't even be, you know, their easy days are like my hard workout days. Hmm. Like the college runner types, types that transition into trail running. And like, there's just like, a, it's like a whole different level. Like I can't even... And I don't even, I don't even know how to get to that point. I'm too, I, I, I don't know if I ever could. I don't, I don't think I, I don't know. Okay. It's a good All question. Right. I'd like to, <laughs> I'd like to know how to, how to I mean, I, I think I'm probably too old for that, but um, maybe not. I don't know. That's one of the nice things about the long, like the hundred milers is you still, I mean, Jeff Browning, the guy that took second at Wasatch, I think he's like 50, 50. or something. Yeah, he's 52. Yeah. yeah. So Mm -hmm. You can keep doing it and be, uh, you know, at least on the local level competitive for a long time. Okay. Um, when Chip and I, well, in, in our community, right, you're like, oh, well, I'm going to sign up for Leadville, Unbound, Lodija. Is that how Ultra Runner, I mean, is Wasatch 100 the thing? Is that where guys are like, okay, I'm going to do it? Yeah, I mean Wasatch is the hundred mile race in Utah. Like there's others, but Wasatch is the race. Okay. It doesn't get a lot of like national. It, it's not really relevant as much on a national level, but locally, I mean, it is the race to do. It is the hundred mile race. If you're going to do one, you got to do Wasatch, at least in my mind. And I think a lot of people feel the same way. Okay. Um, you know, they're big. Like the Western States 100 is like the Super Bowl of running of ultra running in the U.S. There's like the the uh, you know utmb which is the big one in europe there's there's mm -hmm. those races are huge and they draw big crowds and bros um but as far as like local races um, and even like the mountain west region i think wasatch is a big one and it's it's an old race it's been around for a long time um it's got a good reputation um it's a the course is okay <laughs> i mean it's in our backyard and it's it's just like the uh, iconic 100 mile race as far as ultra running goes yeah okay so so walk us through you're now going to decide to do it like how were you just like oh this will be fun yeah how hard, I mean, hard is it to get in you mentioned yeah, like how can you talk about that yeah. You got in. yeah i mean i didn't so the first time i ever put in um i think it, yeah i think it was the first time i got in so i don't i mean there's a lottery. So you have to do the lottery. And I know some people don't get in. So I know, I don't, but I don't know like the odds. How uh, many get in John? Um, That's a good question. I probably should have looked at that. I want to say there's like 350. Yeah. Maybe. I want to say, oh. I was going to say 300 and something. Yeah. I uh, want to know how many don't finish. It shows you there's like, there's yeah. usually like a hundred that don't finish. Man. Yeah. yeah. Like I know um, this doesn't tell me. Yeah, I was looking. I I don't, and I don't know how many finished last year. I think it's roughly half or something. I don't know. Yeah, so last year three oh nine started, two oh two finished. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's right. I remember thinking it was a one of the higher years for finishers. Hmm. Dang, dude! Wow. Okay, so you were like, I'm gonna do it. Yeah, I mean, on a, at the time, I was actually kind of. Um, maybe bored is the is an easy way to say it. I was getting kind of bored with running and kind of thinking um you know maybe maybe that maybe 2023 will be a bike year I've been wanting to get back on, out on the bike more and but I had you know Wasatch so <laughs> actually I guess maybe to go back so 2020 I put in for Wasatch I guess that was the first time I I tried mm. to get um got in and I was turning 40 that year so it was kind of like yeah, look, I'm gonna I'm gonna do this thing that I've has kind of kind of been hanging out there for a while. 
And it was, you know, a couple of years, three years after my surgery. And when I had the surgery, they said, he told me like, you might not really be running like you used to ever again. Mm. So it was kind of like, I was going to do this hundred mile race when I turned 40 and proved to myself, like I could still do something like that. Cool. Um, and then COVID happened and Wasatch got canceled. And, oh, um, but by that time I was committed to doing something. So I, I registered for the bear and did the bear in 2020, the bear 100, which is the one that goes from Logan to, uh, bear Lake. Um, beautiful mm. course. It's a great, great race. Um, but it's not Wasatch. And so Wasatch, even though I did that one, it, it was still kind of hanging out. There's like unfinished business. I felt like it's just one thing that I felt like I had to do, um, as being someone that's into, you know, the kind of ultra, ultra running, uh, whatever. I don't know. I don't want to say scene cause I don't like that. I don't like the, I don't like that idea, but, um, yeah, I, I, it was just something I felt like I had to do at some point. And so I, I, I put in thinking like actually hoping I wouldn't get in so I could just say I tried, but not have to do it. <laughs> um, and then I was going to, you know, I, I know I, that feeling. <laughs> yeah, I, I had like, I had, I think I'd bought, uh, you know, the Midwelle kit for that year. And I was like, I'm going to, get into riding bikes more and get out <laughs> with the crew and meet some of these, all, you know, it's such a huge group now. I don't know so many of them, but um, looking forward to that. And then I got in and it was like, well, now I've got to do this. Mm -hmm. And so once I got in, it was just like, all right, it's, we're going to do it. Um, and that winter, I mean, you know, last winter was insane. So um, which I think actually probably helped me in the long run. I couldn't get out and do like a lot of trail miles early. So it was a lot of again, road running to the extent I could where we were living, um, treadmill miles, just kind of whatever. But yeah, I mean, that's kind of the start of it is um, kind of reluctantly signing up and getting in and now I'm stuck. <laughs> <laughs> now I'm going to do it. Nice. Chip, any follow-ups, any questions? Yeah. Um, so along the way, Talk about some of the setbacks. You 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 decide that you're going to do it, um, and then it's like, uh, what was what was challenging throughout, John? What told you that like this is not going to happen? There's no way I can do. It. Like I think we've all experienced that in some of the things we've signed up for. When you're like, if I just did. 50 miles on this gravel how could i do 100 you know i don't yeah. know yeah yeah good question um i mean going into it i f i felt like i would i could finish it mm. um but going into it i wanted to i wanted to get sub 24 which is you know you get the the crimson cheetah belt buckle it's like the I think on the current course, generally five to seven people finish under 24 every year. Um, and it's a, it's a pretty, at least for me, I thought it was a pretty lofty goal. Like I had, I didn't know if there was any way I could do under 24. Um, you know, that's what I was shooting for. That's what I was hoping for. But hitting that was what would, from time to time, I mean, that mentally, that was the thing that was like, I don't know if I can do this. Um and that's what drove a lot of my training is just, I want to, I, I want to give, I mean, Wasatch because it's in, at least in my mind, so kind of iconic, it's like, it deserves some respect and like, you actually have to properly train for it, um, to, to give it that respect. <laughs> if that makes any sense. Um, you know, there's a lot of people who want to do it and, and I felt like I owed it to at least myself to, to give it everything I had. So I love that mm. when, when you are looking at the scope of the day, how do you manage not getting injured before you arrive? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, and I didn't, I actually, I found, and you know, all this stuff, it's anecdotal. Like it's a, a sample size of one. Like I found what works for me, but it can, it could definitely not work for anybody else. Um, and I found for me, I didn't go into this with a training plan at all. I had a general sense of what I felt like I needed to do each week, like mile wise, elevation wise, and kind of a mix of 
runnable miles and climbing miles and so on. Mm. But I never really made a plan for myself. And I think that was really helpful for, for me and just kind of seeing how I felt when I woke up. And if I wasn't feeling great, then I would dial it back and do something more easy. And if I was feeling great, I'd go out and do something hard. Um, and then also just balancing like different efforts, like, you know, a steep, steep, steep climb, um, obviously puts a different strain on your body than, than a hard, like downhill run or something like that. So, uh, you know, balancing those, I think was helpful for me. I felt, um, injury wise, I felt pretty good. Like the whole, like I have this lingering issue with like my SI joint on one side. Mm. Um, but I was able to keep that at bay with some, you know, exercises from the physical therapist and, but overall, like the hip, hip issues and stuff, I didn't really have much until actually two weeks before the race, I, I got, I think a little cocky on a downhill and pushed it a little too hard <laughs> and did something to bring this hip thing back. And maybe it was mental. Like, honestly, I don't know. Like it was, it was one of those things where it's like the training has gone super well. I'm now in at this point where I'm tapering and feeling pretty good. And then this happens. So whether it was mental or whether I actually, you know, strained some muscle or ligament or whatever, I don't know. But two weeks before the race, I started having this hish, the hip kind of similar to what I had back, you know, in 2016, 2017, mm -hmm. um, started to have this hip issue kind of flare back and that freaked me out. Um, and probably freaked my wife out more. <laughs> like she, like, like the thought of, uh, you know, putting all that time and effort in and then possibly not being, being not being able to finish the race if yeah. I started, um, or finishing the time goal that I'd set was pretty stressful. Um, you know, I went to, yeah, I, did, I did the chiropractors, did needling, did all the stuff and just kind of just lingered. I don't, I, and I don't know what, it, I mean, even after the race, it was, it, it was worse after, after the race, once I started, <clears throat> thankfully, um, you know, it was sore, but it never really got more sore during the race. And in, in a race like that, at least for me, like at a certain point, your body just becomes almost like numb. Like, mm -hmm. like your legs, especially for me, it's like, they just give up and I'm like, all right, like I, we're, just, we're in pain, but I guess you don't care. So <laughs> we're just gonna, just gonna do this. Yeah. Um, so yeah, but I mean, that's the, that is the tricky thing is, is kind of balancing that. And another thing that I think helped me this year compared to like 2020 when I did, so 2020, I did the bear, but I did a 50 miler in June. And I think that took a lot of that out of me because from that point until the race in September, I felt like I was on the edge of injury this year or this last year before Wasatch, I did more of a slow, very slow build and then kind of kept it at a, at a, what I thought was a manageable level and just held it there. And I think that helped a lot. Um, the other thing, um, I had something else and now I forgot it. <laughs> All good. Yeah. John, while you're thinking of that, isn't it so true how everyone two weeks before <laughs> something? Yeah, I could, true. I could so tell true. you four <laughs> times before so like true. bigger races where uh, very yeah. like pretty, yeah. pretty uh, nasty injuries or something comes Sickness. up. Sickness. Yeah. It's yeah. The, bo the body is like, Oh, you've taken me to the brink and, you know, like you were mentioning, you're trying to taper, you're trying yeah. to taper, which is right, but it's just Murphy's. Uh, yeah. It's, it's, and it's frustrating, but like, what do you do? And I don't know, like I, part of me wonders, at least for me, if it was mental, I, one of the, one of the doctors I went to, to try and figure it out, he said, you know, it's, I see this all the time and it's because you're, you're so wound up with all this training and you started to taper and your body thinks oh okay now i can let go of this tension and, and it yeah. just happens i think so yeah huh. yeah that's that's a learning point for all of us <clears throat> it's so yeah true. yeah it makes me wonder like maybe maybe don't taper i don't know, <laughs> I, don't know. <laughs> no, I, re I remember what i was thinking is the other thing um um oh i just lost it again there's something about tapering <laughs> Um, anyway, I don't know. I don't, I don't think I lost it. Yeah. Um, John, maybe could you talk about the day? Like, um, whatever, you, however you want to present the day to us. Can you walk us through how it works? <laughs> and your favorite yeah. foods, John, I want to hear the favorite, the, the, what works for you. 
Yeah. There was so much soup served in Mill Creek Canyon. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's crazy, huh? Yeah. The aid station food, some of it is weird. Um, for me, uh, I like I use gels a lot. The goo gels, I like the nude goo or like the vanilla goo. Um, I've, I've started to use, uh, like drinks a lot more. I used uh formula three, six, nine shout out to, nice. to Eric. Well, yeah, Eric. And, and that I think is a great product. I use that. So my, for Wasatch, my, like when I put together my drop bags, there's a few things that were in that. I mean, goo, different goo. And I guess it wasn't just goo, like goo brand goo. I had a couple others that I, I like that the flavor, I don't do well with super sweet stuff. So like, I can't really do like the, the triple berry goos or whatever. That's just like crazy sweet because I don't want, I just don't want that when I'm into a race. Um, but some sort of gel goo, uh, some scratch. I, I like the caffeinated scratch and then also the pi pineapple flavor scratch. I really like, and then the other thing was formula three, six, nine. And I would kind of use those in tandem to scratch in the formula three, six, nine, just to kind of mix up flavor and, and taste and stuff. And that's, that works pretty well for me. And I <clears throat> didn't, I mean, generally I don't have a lot of stomach distress with that. Um, cinnamon bears. I had that, my <laughs> cinnamon bears. I, <laughs> the reason I, I like cinnamon bears. That's funny. <laughs> um, but I didn't like some, some aid stations, especially late in a race, I'll have like some bacon, but I couldn't, like I tried having bacon this time at, um, uh, what is the aid station after Brighton? I got some bacon and you know it's dark and it's kind of warm and salty and and i couldn't even get it down i chewed it and chewed it as i was running for probably 10 minutes and eventually just spit it out <laughs> it sounds disgusting and it is disgusting but i think at that point as i was looking back i think i was dehydrated and uh mm. probably not in a, in a good place but i mean i had so like I had some stomach distress uh, and maybe, I don't know, maybe I'll go back to the beginning and then get mm -hmm. into it. But um, I don't know. <laughs> I, I, I uh, yeah. Food wise. I don't know. There's some aid stations where like I go into an aid station, I see something I was like, Oh, that sounds good now. And I'll eat it. No, really. um, pickles. Occasionally I'll have a pickle, um, a banana. Uh, I stay, I stay away from like the quesadillas Mm -hmm. um i'm not a, you know, broth and stuff occasionally i've had broth in the past but i don't think it had any of wasatch i think mostly at wasatch i used what was in my drop bags all right i want to i want to hear because i don't know anything about this race it starts at what 5 a.m yeah yeah i think that's right 5 a.m i had so starts in was it fruit heights or something up in like davis county um, two of my friends, Brian Robbins, Nick Serlos, that I run with a lot, they drove me up to the start line and it was like a zoo. Like it was, it was crazy. It was, it was like, so, uh, it was, uh, I don't know. I don't know how to describe it. It was, it was wild. <laughs> there are just people everywhere and so much like energy and, you know, which is to be expected to race, but this was like at a higher level than I'd seen before. It was just kind of like, wow, I don't, I mean. And then, um, so we got there, everybody's lining up for the race. It's dark, um, a lot of energy and that race people take off. Like it's a, like it's a 10 K, like it was a pretty quick start. Um, and, um, I don't know. So, so you, you've got to kind of remind yourself, like, I, I don't want to blow it in the first few miles. There's, it kind of winds around on the shoreline trail. And then it gets into Bear Canyon and there's like four miles of like a 4,000 foot climb. So a huge climb right at the beginning. And so, and that's partly why I think it starts off fast is people don't want to get stuck in a Congo line going up that. Um, mm -hmm. But even, even then, like, I, I don't know. I mean, people, they, they do what they do. I don't know. <laughs> a lot of unwise race strategies at the beginning of Wasatch, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. Um but yeah, I mean, that was the start. And then it's just all the, uh, with the injury thing. I was, I was just, I was focused on, on that, you know, constantly evaluating, like, is it getting worse? Am I, is it holding, am I going to have to think about dropping at some point? And Interesting. after a while, <clears throat> just kind of went with it. Um, so yeah, the beginning of the race, <clears throat> you got this huge climb um, that goes up to the radio towers um, in Farmington, which I think a, a lot of you have uh, you know, ridden bikes up to those. So you're, you get up high, 
and then it's on a road, you know, going down for quite a ways. Um, and are you saying it goes up to that thing we rode our bikes to, Chip? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh from, my and, gosh! Yeah, now listen to where it goes from here. You know exactly <laughs> where it is. <laughs> yeah. So so it goes it goes up to goes up to like the where the radio towers are the road. So you go yeah. straight up Bear Canyon up to the road, and then you're on the road for quite a ways. Um, and it's like I know the first aid station is like 16 miles in. Um, but you're on the, once you get up on the road, you're on that road for a long time. You go yeah. like across Farmington Canyon and you're going towards like the, the first aid station is called Bountiful B. So it's kind okay. of that general area. So, so they're running what we rode. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. On that, on that dirt road. And those are some of the, like the nicest trail miles as far as like conditions. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, it's a, a nice dirt gravel road. So, and, uh, just kind of cruise or downhill miles. It, have to be careful not to blow your quads too early but um okay so then um and this is probably the the section that is a little bit fuzzy in my mind as far as like um like where like where we went um and it was on the road then we kind of got off the road onto a trail and uh you know it kind of goes up and down up and down until you get to um I got Bountiful View as the first aid station and Sessions, which is um, ses Sessions. So so talking to people that had done it um, and just hearing stories, I knew that like like Big Mountain, a little bit before Big Mountain through Lambs was like the crux, at least in my mind. It's it's And I don't do well in the heat. So mm -hmm. that was what scared me. Like the whole, all through training um, at Wasatch, it was that section that was that I was most afraid of because it was heat, it was hot, it's it's exposed. Um, I've heard so many stories of people getting sick and just you know heat exposure and races ruined in that section. But so, you got there at like what time of day? It was like early afternoon, right? It was pretty early. Uh, yeah. and, and thankfully the weather was uh, relatively nice. It wasn't a super hot day. Um, and I don't remember. I should have. I should have pulled up the my splits. They've got them all on the website. But yeah, I mean, I. Um, I mean, sessions is twenty miles in, and I don't know. That was probably. Um, I don't know, ten o'clock or something. Ten, eleven o'clock. I, I. I don't know. Um, but sessions, I had them fill my whole, the whole back of my pack with ice. Just, come this ice, like the whole thing filled with with um, ice cubes. Yeah. And I did that pretty much all through um, lambs, every aid station I went through until I got to lambs. I think I had people put, uh, you know, the aid station workers put ice in my, in my pack, which mm. kept, kept me, you know, pretty cool, I think, but still it's hot. <laughs> um, so sessions, and then you get up to big mountain pass um, and big mountain pass to lambs was, was the section I was afraid of. Mm. And so it was like, and, and that up until lambs, I told myself, like, you've just got to be, be as conservative as, as possible. That was my plan. Hmm. Just kind of take it easy, take it slow, um, try and manage manage the effort. Don't get too hot. Stay cool, stay cool. I mean, that was probably the biggest thing is just staying cool. Stay cool, yeah. stay hydrated. Um, so you get to Big Mountain Pass. And that was where my, my wife was. Um, so I didn't really have uh, – my wife was my crew, was the plan. And <laughs> she – and thankfully, I have a, a friend, uh, Brian Robbins, who who showed up at, at several aid stations and helped out. And I ended up having some other friends that were there, you know, crewing other people, and they helped out too. But like through the three aid stations where you could have crew, I had a pretty good group, and they got me in and out like a like a NASCAR crew. It was great. Nice. Um, but yeah, saw my wife, saw saw my friends at uh, Big Mountain Pass. That was helpful. And then it was just like conserve mode. It was hot. Um, how many times can I say hot? <laughs> that was, that was honestly just my, my, that was what I was most afraid of the whole race. Like that was the section I thought, I don't know how this is going to turn out for me. And in my mind, I told myself, if I can get through that point, then I'm, I'm good. You're good. Um, so, and it was hot and I fell once right before in that section going down. So you go big, but you come into big mountain, you kind of drop down into big mountain pass. And then you kind of do a little climb and then um, it's, it's, it's kind of rolling through there and it's dry. Um, the next day station is Alexander Ridge, which is like mile 40. 
And right before that, I fell on a downhill section, broke a goo open. So I was all like gooey and gross. And, and I started to have some like bloating, stomach bloating issues. Um, And I think probably from the heat is my guess. Um, So it was like, okay, but I was still doing okay, still moving okay. Um, And then from Alexander Ridge to Lamb's Underpass was, it was kind of just a hot, another hot section. You go through these like grassy sections where it's like you're off trail and, you wind around up and down, up and down, and um, eventually you get to, to Lambs underpass. And Lambs, uh, it's the second place you could have crew. So my wife was there, and and they got me in. I had some pretty good blisters for me. I changed mm-hmm. shoes at Lambs. Um, they, I got some uh, blister tape on my toes. Nice. Uh, and were, and were you in, were you in third place at this time? Were you like, I'm doing pretty good? I'm like, I think, out front. I think at that point I was fourth or fifth. Maybe fifth, maybe fifth or sixth. I don't know. Hmm. I was still not really too worried about it. I mean, I knew Jose right. was leading from like the get go. I know he was way out. Jeff and Jeff Browning, the guy who took second, and then Paul, the guy who ended up taking fourth, were kind of running together. And I knew they were, I figured they were quite a ways ahead of me. I think there might have been one or two others ahead of me hmm. at that point. <laughs> um, but yeah, stom- stomach issues. I was starting to get kind of concerned about that. Um, I was in flams. I don't know. I tried to be quick in the aid stations in and out, but I think it probably took 10 minutes there to just kind of regroup and get new shoes and everything else. I get, I, I picked up, uh, I think that's where I picked up poles, hiking poles, which I carried through the rest of the race. Hmm. Um, but what I think maybe saved my race is, um, you go, so lambs, the lambs aid station is kind of right at the mouth of the, of lambs Canyon, obviously. And, um, there's a bathroom on the road, just like an outhouse bathroom, like, right. I think a mile or two up lambs. Yeah. 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 I stopped in that bathroom. And I, like my soul came out of me, <laughs> like the most, um, <laughs> like explosive diarrhea that I've ever experienced. Oh my gosh. That was just probably the emptied, best. <laughs> just emptied everything and <laughs> just destroyed the bathroom. <laughs> You can't um, destroy an outhouse. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it was, it was, it was like a, a lifesaver, honestly, just having that right there. That's uh, awesome. When I left, one of my, uh, one of my friends said, you know, there's a, there's a bathroom right up the road. You stop there if you need to. And I did. And it was great. I, when I was in there, I, I felt like I was in there for 15 minutes. It was probably shorter than that, yeah. but I heard a couple of people go by. And so I just kind of started stressing out like, uh, oh, shoot. You know, how's this going to turn out? But yeah, felt uh, like felt like a million bucks coming out of there. <laughs> nice. It's like the relief was like, okay, now That's I can funny. now I can refocus myself and yeah. And then you know it starts to cool off a little bit because you start going up. Um, they call it Barass Pass. I don't I don't know what the real name is. Maybe that's the real name, but mm. you know, up and over into Mill Creek. Um, so it starts to cool off there. And uh, it's a big climb, so just kind of took it slow. I had poles, so that was helpful. I just kind of moseyed along. And then, you know, the nice, I mean, it's not a nice downhill, but some downhill into into Mill Creek. And then you get on, onto that that new Mill Creek trail at Elbow Fork. Mm-hmm. And then that, then that was nice. Like, it was cool. It was much cooler. And I felt so like- So you guys, you guys run up that, the new pipeline trail. Yeah. Yeah, it used to, so it used to go. Um, once you hit Elbow Fork, mm-hmm. you'd go on the road from there right. up to Big Ma- or uh, Big Water. Yeah, yeah. Now it's you hop over onto that new trail and ah. you're on the trail the whole way. Okay. Um, and then you you drop back down into the parking lot at the top of Mill Creek, and then you go yeah. back up into towards huh. um, Dog. Uh, yeah, Dog Desolation. Lake. Yeah, yeah, Dog Lake, then to Desolation through that that nice connector trail. Yeah. Um, but yeah, and I. I Put some headphones in going up mill creek um nice. asked a couple of people that gave me like a, a nice boost and then from there it was just like i felt decent um i kind of had, had some stomach bloating but was able to kind of manage it with some breathing mm. which sounds weird <laughs> but deep breaths helps for some reason i don't know mm. um, yeah and then from there it was just like a, a push like i was just pushing from there on out let's just go um and i got into so I think I was, I think I left, um, when I was making a plan, I was trying to figure out what I needed in my drop bags. 
and how much did, how much time would be what you know what how much do I need to put in these drop bags and so it's kind of nice because Wasatch they've put a spreadsheet that has everybody's splits for every aid station for like the last decade or something wow. and so pulled up and pulled out all the people who had finished within this range that I kind of wanted to shoot for and my goal was sub 24 but I figured I wanted to give myself a buffer so I think I think my target to finish time was like two or 22 30. And in my mind, in my mind, I didn't think I could do it in that, but I figured that would give me an hour and a half and I could still finish under 24 and be yeah. okay. So uh, going, out, going out of lambs, I think I was 10 minutes behind my, my projected splits. And then, um, or maybe it was more than that, because I think I was, I was um, like, I was on pace to hit um, Brighton like 30 minutes after what I thought I would be. But in that time between Lambs and Brighton, I made up that time and, and hit pretty close to what my what my projected split was. Um, and that felt good. Um, and then from there on, you know, at Brighton, it's you get a head, head lamp on, you get ready to go into the dark. Oh, the steep oh. climb up from Brighton and then you a steep descent and then a steep climb and then a descent. And then it's, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> but you you run through the night and i remember following like i was following your timing you finished before it was morning right yeah yeah and i don't know like that's a whole different i this the yeah, the thought of running all day literally all day right all night and all still night. running when the sun comes up is, <laughs> that, that i i applaud that because for me that would be just it would be rough uh, especially because um you know you finish and the last few miles are just on a dirt road around deer creek and the idea of running those in the morning the next day oh. just it, it's i it would be rough in my mind i don't brutal it's nice to be done in less than a less than 24 hours <laughs> yeah because i think it just like mentally i it's got to be i don't know i mean that's that's something when you, like, whenever I finish races, our old coach, me and John's coach, uh, Chase, he would always send me a message that was interesting, but he'd always ask, he didn't ever say like, oh, how'd it go? He always just says, what did you learn? Um, he walk us through what you learned. I mean, you know, it doesn't have to be about like anything spiritual, just like yeah, physical, anything. What'd you <laughs> learn? Yeah. I mean, one thing that's, that's cool about 100 mile races is that you go, I mean, you know, people say it's kind of like life. It's like life in a, <laughs> a, a uh, I don't know what the, the word is for it, but um, it's amazing to me how you can be to a point, and this goes to, I think, I don't know if you or Chip said it early on, but this idea of like you've done 50 miles or something, and then the idea of doing another 50 is just like insane. Yeah. Like, And I remember the first 50 mile I, mile I ever did and when I finished, I was totally dead. I was like on the border of another passing mile. out. Yeah. And like, I couldn't even fathom the idea of running another 50 miles. Like it just <laughs> seemed impossible. Yeah. Um, but there's something about just like sticking through those hard times, those low moments. And it's amazing to see how your energy can come back, mm. like almost sometimes stronger than before. Like it's, it's weird. And obviously like the, if you have stomach issues and you can't get food down and you just have like, you're totally empty, right. there's not a lot you can do, Possible, Yeah. but as long as you can keep food down and just keep moving at it. And, and I tell myself through these races, like, just keep moving at it. Just keep moving at whatever is efficient at that time for you. It might be a, a walk. It might be a jog. It might be um, hopefully not a crawl, but, and, and that's another great thing about hundreds. It's like you, you can, uh, you don't have to be too stressed about walking and, it's a long, I mean, it's a long time, right? right? It's a long time to do anything. And as, as long as you can stick with it and keep yourself moving, like those low times can become high times. Um, and it's amazing to me how that, how that happens. And I think it's true with life too. If you can stick yeah. through those hard times, there's always going to be enough time ahead. I love that. Um, there's no doubt that you are drawn to suffering. I don't. I, what, I, I, why? I don't do, you, do, you, do you believe that? 
I don't, I don't know. I, that's actually one of the, you know, I saw that question and I, I've been thinking about that one a lot. And I mean, it looks like I, I might be, that's not, that's not what draws me to it. Okay. That's what I want. Um, it's, um, I, I think the suffering is part of it. Like it, it wouldn't be like anything. Like it's not worth doing if it's not hard. You know, what's that saying that, I mean, that's life in general, right? The hard things are often the best things. Um, and that's why we're here, I think, is to, you know, go through hard times. And we learn a lot about ourselves. And I think maybe that's, I think that's probably why I, I, there's several reasons, reasons why I like to do it. One, I like just the adventure side of it, like mm -hmm. to be out in the woods and for training too, like remote space spaces that would take you, if you were hiking, like there's a lot of places I've been to that if I were hiking, that I couldn't do it. There's just not enough time. Mm -hmm. Um, but you know, running through the, the mountains you get to see a lot of cool things and uh, that's part of it just kind of the adventure of it and and for me like I didn't really there's such sec obviously sections of Wasatch I'd done before uh, the, you know the race Wasatch um, but they're like I didn't I hadn't run the last part of it before which might have hurt me in hindsight like with how it finished because <laughs> uh, I would have known a lot more about it but but part of it for me is like the newness of it like experience new things see new things um, and then just learn something about myself, I think is a big thing, Nice. Um, which is, then the whole thing is really kind of selfish. In fact, the, the intro that my wife done, I mean, it could have been like, this jerk spends all his time <laughs> running and he should be home with us and I the, agree. <laughs> you know, doing family vacations. And, and, you know, you say the, what is it? The ineffective dad <laughs> syndrome, like that is a yeah. real thing. Like you go and do, you know, a 20 mile run or a big ride or whatever, and then you've got to come home and act like you just sprung out of bed. And mm -hmm. um, so it is, it is, I mean, it's a super selfish thing and running like Wasatch is, is, is a pretty selfish thing. Right. I mean, right. I didn't have any pacers, but I, I expected my wife to be at the aid stations. And that is, I mean, it's a, it's a lot, like it's your whole day. You're, you're driving from place to place, then waiting around and driving, right. waiting around, driving, waiting around and, you know, trying to check splits online. And it's, uh, I mean, I couldn't, I couldn't do it without that help. And it, it's, it's also, I mean, I don't know. It's a, it's a weird thing. <laughs> But I, but I, I get a lot out of it. I'm not and and it's, and for me, it's not just about the physical like suffering of it. It's also, I mean, mentally, I think it's, it's great. Like I don't know how people live without you know some sort of vigorous exercise in their lives. Like not just the physical aspect of it, but the mental kind of release. And I can be super stressed over something at work or with family or whatever. And if I go and get a good run in or a good ride or whatever it is, it just it resets me and. Um, you know, there are a few things that do that for me and, and these kind of hard efforts is one of them that it, it never fails that I come back, uh, that refreshed and kind of ready to go. Nice. So I don't know. I don't know if the, I mean, the no, suffering is definitely an aspect of it, but I don't think I'd do it just for that. <laughs> I love that. So many good thoughts there, John, especially, I mean, I, I feel the same way about, you know, taking, a hobby and turning it into something that is bigger than it really is. Yeah. Um, like this is my life. You know? <laughs> yeah. This is, yeah. It's, so. it, it's, it's, it's such a weird thing because it, and it, I remind myself that too, it, it's a hobby. Like nobody cares really. I mean, nobody, you, you finish Wasatch and, you know, even doing relatively well, it's like no one is really there at the end, but your family. <laughs> If, if they want to stay up that late and like 3 a.m. <laughs> yeah. The, at the end of the day, no one really cares. And it is just a hobby. And that's why I think it's, it's, um, I mean, it's, you gotta have fun doing it. And that's for me what, you know, I didn't really go into it with a training plan. It was like, I just want to have fun. I want to get it done. And yeah. if you're not having fun doing it, like why do it? Because you give up a lot of other things, you know, time with family, time at work, um, to, to do this thing and, and getting too serious about it and making it into something that it's, but it's not, I think it's also detrimental too. Like if you get injured and your whole life is about running or writing and you can't do it anymore, like that's, I've, people get in some dark places. I agree. Uh, you know, you gotta, it's a bit, sometimes it's hard, you know, you get with your buddies and everybody's into it and it's fun to talk about and it's fun to talk about races after the fact and all the cool stories. But at the end of the day, it's like, it's such a insignificant thing, really. <laughs> um. Okay, so now everyone wants to know, 
Do you dare? I mean, not dare, but like, this is a pretty, it was pretty good, right? The day. Yeah. Do you have any desire? Because a lot of these guys like Storheim, he's like, he's just like on repeat, right? Like do it yeah. once, we'll double. Yeah. I got to do five. That's when it really matters. Do you have, yeah. What's that thought process like? Oh, I don't know. I mean, going into it, uh, those weeks before where I thought I was maybe injured and was going to have issues, like part of, I was freaked out because I didn't, at that time, I was like, I did all this training. I don't want to do it again. Hmm. I don't want to ha have to train, come back next year and train all over for it. But after it went so well <laughs> and looking back and thinking like the training was honestly fun. Like it, uh, it was, I mean, it was hard, but it was a lot of fun and it kind of rekindled my love for running. Um, would I do it again? I don't, I mean, right now I don't have any plans to do it again. Hmm. And I don't know if that's because like I did well and I don't want to show myself that maybe I can do not so well. <laughs> <laughs> that's how I do. <laughs> um, I just, you know, one and done. I mean, I did it. I, I experienced it. Um, and that's what I went there for. Will I ever do it again? I don't know. Right now I have no plans to, yeah. I, I'd like to do some other things. I'd like to do like crusher. I'd like, I've always wanted to do, do that. I and mean, it seems like oh. such a cool race. And yeah, it's awesome. Um, I mean, you've done that several times, right? Or just twice. Okay. Just twice. Yeah. And you're doing it this year, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. yeah. I mean, that so seems fun. like a cool thing to do. Yeah. There's a lot of, see, and, and more, more to the point of like, this is a hobby. Like, it, I think that's like the, like guys like Scott miles, like that guy, he's so well-rounded. Like he mm -hmm. can go out and run like a 50 K and do well, and then go and ride like a hundred mile bike ride the next day. Like that, that is, I think that's a good place to be. Me too. Yeah. And then he's master skier. Like, yeah. I agree. Yeah. Very fun. Um, any advice, I want to wrap up any advice to young John, if mm. you saw, if you saw yourself as a 21 year old, <laughs> um, like fitness advice or just advice. Mm. Generally? <laughs> I'll leave that up to you. <laughs> um, I don't know. Don't be so self-conscious. <laughs> <laughs> That's probably, I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. Don't be so, yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to go with that. Don't be so self-conscious. Just yeah. be, try to be more comfortable in your own skin. Hmm. Oh, that seems good. like a dumb thing to say, but. <laughs> well, that's good. Um, we didn't mention earlier, uh, and it was funny, John, I didn't even um, put two and two together, but uh, John works for um, one of our sponsors, which is awesome. I guess I can't even say works for you, right? You're a partner now. I um, am, Yeah pretty awesome so um used to be jones waldo was our old sponsor forever onto the kits but uh now i actually don't even know how to say the second name john will you say it <laughs> parsons bailey. everybody gets it wrong they okay. say parsons honestly, bill bailey. i think but it's parsons yeah. bailey and latimer and latimer so it's... you wear yeah no go ahead no i'm saying your their logos on your jersey so yeah and it's not a great it, like it, it's not a great logo for the jersey i guess it's that. tough it's kind of like <laughs> we need something yeah we need like a, like a written out the jones waldo one worked i feel like yeah a few years ago um a bunch of people from jones waldo joined our firm and and with that we started doing the sponsorship and it's it's great i was excited about it <laughs> all right dude well no matter what you think I think what you accomplished is unreal. I can't imagine the preparation, the suffering, the mental fortitude. I mean, I know like what you said, it could be interpreted as this jerk is selfish, but either way, <laughs> it is from an endurance perspective. Um, like I'm proud of you. It was incredible. Thank you. That's, that's really nice. And, and honestly, like it, it means a lot to me to hear that, um, like, this is going to sound so stupid, <laughs> but there's times when like, I'll be having a bad day at work or something and I'll go back to my, you know, the Strava thing oh. for it and look at the comments and think, oh, yeah, I'm, I, I'm, I'm a, I'm a person like <laughs> I, think I, can, I can do, I can do hard I things. That. People yes, care. You it's, can. it's and that that's so dumb to say <laughs> to admit so to that. Maybe, maybe we edit that part out. But <laughs> I mean, it's uh, it is no way. It is. I don't know. It's something. It's it's something that I will always look back on and think like I did that. Yeah, for sure. Like I, I did it, and sure. and it might not ever mean more than that. But yeah. I don't know. It, it was fun. It's fun. It's fun talking about it. I thanks for having you know having me on to talk about it. I know it's 
probably boring to a lot of people. I, I wish I had some cool bike stories to talk about, <laughs> but in the, but to come, I'm going to be on the bike more. Cool. Gonna, I'm going to ride the trails more. So that's, nice. that's on my, that's on my agenda. John, are you kidding me? Every other week I'm like scrolling back through Strava's just remembering how good it was. That's not it was, odd. <laughs> no, it was, yeah. It's, it, that is the great thing about Strava. Like in the, and like, I'll go back and look at my year, like the pictures that I posted and say, oh, that was a, that was a great run. Great I remember this or that, or I remember being with this person or that person. And man, what, how, how great is it to be able to, to go out and do this stuff? Like it's I such agree. a blessing to be able to go out and do that. Yeah. I do the same thing. We all do. Everybody better be doing that. I, I won't, I won't feel too bad about it then. Okay, good. <laughs> <laughs> all righty, dude. Well, right, hopefully well, we'll thanks. see you. Yeah, we'll see more of you out on the bike. Yeah, I'm going to try and keep up one of these days. Get out on a, on a group ride. Cool. All right, All right. Dude. Hey, way to go. Appreciate you. <laughs> All right, see you. Thanks, John. Bye,